In this lesson, we shall study how energy is consumed and power is dissipated in the logic gates of modern digital integrated circuits. Energy and power are important performance measures in modern digital integrated circuit systems. Uh, both concepts uh, are used interchangeably, so there may arise some confusion about when one should optimize for energy and when one should optimize for power. The basic unit of work is energy. Uh, what we mean by this is that every logical operation, every single computation consumes a fixed number of joules or fixed number of energy to perform. So if we are concerned about prolonging the longevity of digital IC systems in mobile devices due to portability, that is to, uh, to uh, maximize the uh, lifespan of a battery, we are really concerned about performing the maximum number of computations we have, we can, for a given uh, amount of energy that is stored in batteries. Similarly, if we are talking about the efficiency of a modern uh, server uh, system, the energy efficiency that is related to uh, uh, the concept of green computing, that is we want to have more environmentally uh, friendly computing, we are talking about uh, the capacity to uh, perform computations with the minimum amount of energy needed. And this leads to operational longevity. So in the context of uh, uh, power optimization in uh, most uh, modern uh, digital IC systems, when we talk about low power systems, we are really trying to optimize for the energy consumption, that is to minimize the energy consumption, either to uh, increase the number of uh, computations that can be performed for a fixed capacity, or to increase the efficiency, that is to increase the number of operations that to reduce the energy cost per operation in uh, modern server systems. So when do we optimize for power? Power is the rate of consumption of energy. So for, inst uh, for example, if uh, 10 computational uh, operations or 10 logic operations consumes n number of joules or a fixed number of, en uh, of energy, that energy, can cons be consumed, that energy can be consumed within a very short duration of time or the consumption of the energy could be spread out over a long duration. When we talk about power, we are talking about uh, the ability of uh, a power source or the computational system to handle large amounts of energy consumed within a short duration of time. So really, we optimize for power in the case where we uh, are concerned about heating because consuming a large quantity of energy within a short duration of time within a small area leads to a, uh, a quick rise of heating, uh, heating in the circuit, which imposes uh, more strict requirements for cooling. And another place where, another application area where uh, we are concerned about optimizing power is when we think about the capacity of the power supply to, uh, to uh, provide um, this quantity of energy in such a short duration of time. Uh, if uh, the uh, power capacity of the supply, whether it is a battery or an electrical uh, wall source of a generator, is insufficient to meet the peak or instantaneous demand, power demand, that is the instantaneous or peak uh, requirement of energy within a short duration of time, the system may fail to perform. Now that we understand the situation and the scenarios where we should optimize for energy and where we should optimize for power, let us take a look at where energy is consumed and where power is dissipated in the computational operation of digital logic gates. We take for example 
uh, the most elementary gate, which is our uh, not gate or our inverter, uh, uh, which is uh, comprised of a PMOS transistor in series with an NMOS transistor, as shown in this circuit diagram. To study where energy and power is consumed, we must understand how uh, we must uh, consider the input voltage to the gate, the output voltage to the gate, which is also the voltage developed across the capacitor, and which also gives us the drain to source voltage across the PMOS transistor, as well as the drain to source voltage across the uh, NMOS transistor. We also consider the uh, current flowing through the PMOS transistor, the current flowing through the NMOS transistor, and the current flowing through the uh, uh, capacitive load. This is because uh, power is equal to current times voltage. We begin our analysis uh, by trying to understand the steady state situation, that is the initial state of the gate. Uh, the logic is held high at the input, and at the output, the logic is held low. The PMOS gate is uh, in cutoff because uh, there is no overdrive voltage at the input, and the NMOS gate is, uh, has a conducting channel in saturation mode because the overdrive voltage is large, but the drain to source voltage is uh, up close to zero. When the transition at the input from uh, logic 1 begins to fall linearly to logic 0, an overdrive voltage starts to develop over the PMOS transistor and a conducting channel begins to be formed. Therefore, current begins to flow through the PMOS transistor and uh, because the uh, PMOS transistor is in a uh, linear region, uh, there, is, uh, there is a conducting channel and the drain to source voltage is high, the current is proportional, that is linearly proportional to the overdrive voltage VGS as seen here. There is a short instance of time when there appears to be a conducting channel across the PMOS and across the NMOS transistor. And this gives rise to a short circuit or crowbar current in this direction. This current is, uh, is, uh, is a form of uh, wasted current because the energy does not um, direct, the energy cons uh, consume um, the power that is dissipated by this current uh, does not uh, does not contribute to the computational operation of the logic gate. That is, it does not contribute to the change in, uh, in the output logic level. Um, as the, uh, as the uh, current across the PMOS transistor is uh, increasing linearly, the uh, NMOS transistor is... Uh, the NMOS transistor is going into a uh, cutoff because the overdrive voltage across the NMOS transistor now goes to zero. At the point where, uh, at the point where the voltage, uh, the voltage at the input reaches zero, the PMOS transistor starts to uh, charge the output load significantly because uh, now the output uh, capacitance sees the full VDD and there is an exponential uh, the exponential charging of the output capacitor that is the output voltage increases exponentially uh, increases uh, exponentially whereas the current will now decrease exponentially to zero when the uh, capacitor is fully charged. The same operation occurs, uh, a similar operation occurs with the gates inverted on the transition from zero to
two logic one. So now we have understood the uh, uh, the uh, voltage and current behavior through the PMOS, NMOS, and the capacitive load of the output. We are in a good position to calculate the power dissipated by each of these elements and uh, ultimately to compute the energy consumed by the total circuit and by each of these elements. Let us proceed to that analysis now. The power consumed by the PMOS uh, transistor is simply the current uh, flowing through the PMOS transistor times by uh, the drain to source uh, voltage here that is uh, VDD minus V out in the in when the PMOS is operating in the uh, linear regime here okay the voltage is also increasing uh, somewhat uh, in a in a small way and this gives rise to a uh, uh, power consumption here. Uh, the power consumption in this region also uh, there's also some power consumed by the uh, crowbar current flowing this way uh, and by the NMOS transistor uh, because of the crowbar current uh, because there is a small current from the crowbar current uh, flowing through the NMOS transistor and also a small linearly increasing voltage across the load. When uh, the input transition stabilizes to zero, input voltage stabilizes to zero, uh, we are now in the exponentially um, decreasing current regime of the NMOS, whereas the PMOS is now in cutoff. So at this point, only the uh, PMOS transistor uh, dissipates power uh, at, uh, at an almost uh, constant voltage here uh, because the voltage is across the capacitor is the, across the uh, uh, drain to source of the uh, PMOS transistor is approximately VDD. So uh, the power dissipation is uh, exponentially decreasing following the uh, uh, in proportion to the uh, PMOS current here. So a similar uh, uh, pattern of uh, power dissipation appears on the NMOS transistor during the uh, transition from low to high. The capacitor, uh, if we observe the what is occurring at the capacitive load, uh, power is uh, consumed, uh, there is an input current to the capacitor during the high to low transition at the, uh, at the logic gate, whereas power is uh, sent out from the capacitor to ground during the low to high transition here. And if we integrate the power over time, we get the total energy consumption, uh, the total energy uh, uh, not consumed, but stored in the capacitor. And that is given by this amount. That is, the energy is stored at this point. And when power flows out of the capacitor to ground, the energy is lost to ground at this point. Now the interesting point to note here is if we were to study the power uh, the power extracted from the power supply that is the total current through the PMOS and NMOS transist uh, transistors and the load that is the car that is the current through the PMOS transistor times the uh, uh, the source, uh, the supply voltage, this is the total power extracted from the power supply, we get this curve. And this curve is, uh, this curve, uh, the, uh, 
the power extracted from the uh, supply is actually more than the power consumed, uh, the power dissipated by the PMOS at this instance. And we can see that the total energy uh, extracted from the power supply, that is by integrating, uh, that is by integrating the uh, power extracted from the supply over time, like this. This total energy extracted from the power supply is uh, more, uh, is more than the energy that is stored in the capacitor. Okay. So what this graph tells us is the power supply will provide uh, this amount of energy to the digital gate of which only a fraction of that energy, a, a smaller proportion of that energy is stored in the capacitor which will be lost during the, uh, to ground during the 0 to 1 transition of the inverter. So this leads us to a question, where does the, uh, where does the uh, additional, uh, where does the additional, uh, sorry, let's go back, oops, okay, Okay, let's resume. Let's, this leads us to ask the question, where does the rest of the uh, energy that was supplied by the power supply go if, they were, if, if it is not stored in the capacitor? Let us study the uh, power consumption equation uh, in detail. Uh, the energy uh, supplied by the power supply is given by the current extracted from the power supply, that is the current through the PMOS transistor, times VDD. Okay. Current is uh, capacitance times the rate of change of voltage, and we can cancel out DT, and we perform a voltage integration here, which is given here. And because VDD is uh, constant, okay, the energy coming out uh, being provided by the power supply is equals to CVDD squared. Now we consider the energy that is stored in the capacitor. It is also the current through the capacitor times the voltage, CDVDT, and the uh, DT uh, cancel. But the main difference now is that the voltage across the capacitor is a time varying voltage, no longer constant. And therefore, the integration is over a time-varying voltage. And uh, this gives rise to uh, half CVC squared. Since the uh, capacitor is being charged in, uh, with, by VDD, uh, by VDD uh, there is only half CVDD squared of energy being stored in the capacitor. Therefore, we come to our first important conclusion that is during the high to low transition of an inverter, the power supply provides CVDD squared joules of energy of which only half of that quantity of energy is stored in the capacitor. So where goes the other half of that energy? Let us consider now uh, the uh, RC representation of the digital uh, inverter, where the PMOS transistor now can be represented by an equivalent resistance, and the NMOS transistor also represented by an equivalent resistance with a switch. Um, and uh, this um, model is justified because uh, the analysis for the charging and discharging occurs when the PMOS, and PMOS is in saturation region. And we know that when an, a, a MOS transistor is in saturation region, uh, because, uh, the, uh, because the uh, voltage across the uh, 
drain to source is proportional to the drain to source voltage BDS. Uh, the MOSFET behaves approximately like a resistor because there is a proportionality uh, between the uh, the current the current is proportional to the voltage across uh, the drain to source. So the supply provides CVDD squared of energy of which only half CVDD squared is stored in this capacitor during the high to low transition. The other half CVDD squared is consumed as work done by the PMOS to transfer this half CVDD squared into the capacitor. So the switching uh, in response to a high to low transition, the charging of the capacitor consumes half CVDD squared of joules of energy in the PMOS and during the uh, low to high transition uh, at the gate, that uh, the switching operation also consumes the half CVDD squared stored in the capacitor as the uh, computation, uh, as the logic level changes from 1 to 0 at the output node. So we can conclude that for a digital inverter, the price of a logic computation, that is the energy cost of a logic computation, is half C VDD squared. C is the capacitance of the output uh, load. Uh, half C VDD squared whether the transition is from low to high or high to low. We have now seen how energy is consumed and we have quantified the amount of energy that is consumed for a single uh, logic operation in a digital inverter. The half CVDD squared energy is the price of a logic computation and this is known as dynamic power specifically it is known as the switching power we've also seen that during the switching process the uh, digital gate um, has a small duration in time where the digital gate conducts current tr from uh, through the NMOS and PMOS and we have also mentioned that this uh, current uh, which also leads to a uh, power dissipation and uh, consumption energy does not directly contribute to uh, the uh, computation of the logic gate. This is known as the short circuit or crowbar uh, current. Uh, it is uh, the short circuit power and this power is also considered a form of dynamic power because this power is uh, consumed, uh, the energy is consumed only during switching activity or computational activity of the logic gates. Therefore, we have seen that um, there is a power associated to computational activity. Uh, that power comes, that power dissipation comes from the consumption of energy to do useful computational work. This is known as the switching power, as well as the consumption of uh, a, a kind of loss uh, due to the short circuit power, this is due to the architecture of the logic gate, which does not contribute to the computation, but is lost because of the architecture. This is known as the short circuit power. And this power is dynamic because it is proportional to the number of computational operations performed by the digital logic gate. There is also another class of power that is dissipated by the uh, logic gates, which is known as static power. And this power is dissipated uh, regardless of whether there is computation performed or not. Uh, where does this power dissipation come from? Well, when we are hold when the uh, logic levels at the input and at the output of the logic gates are being held steady, there are voltages applied at the gate, drain, and source. Uh, due to the uh, imperfect nature of the MOSFET. Okay. There could be a small leakage current that flows from the gate to bulk of the, um, the MOSFET. Okay. And we have 
we know from our study of digital MOSFETs that the uh, source and drain, uh, that is the dope regions of the source and drain, form a weak uh, diode with the bulk. And these two can have a reverse bias uh, leakage uh, voltage. And this is known as the junction and diffusion leakage. And when uh, there is a small um, and when there is a small voltage uh, gate to source voltage and a large VDS, we also know that there could be a uh, small subthreshold leakage current from the drain to source that could flow because of a parasitic uh, bipolar transistor that is created in the uh, BMOS and NMOS uh, gates. So static power arises from the, um, uh, from the uh, physical uh, configuration of the PMOS and NMOS gate and the presence of voltages on the nodes which uh, lead to leakage currents through the device. And static power is consumed regardless of whether um, uh, computation is performed by the circuit. So when we are considering the energy that is consumed by a digital uh, 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 logic circuit or digital IC, we must consider the energy consumed, uh, the total energy consumed by uh, static power, uh, static uh, sources. Okay, so if we know the static power, we can cons uh, we can compute the total energy consumed uh, during a duration of operation by integrating the static power over that duration of time. Okay, that will give us the energy consumed by static leakages. We should also compute the energy uh, from dynamic sources, which is the switching sources, uh, which performs useful computational work, as well as the brief transient short circuit sources that is a form of uh, loss not contributing directly to the computational uh, load. Uh, if we want to improve the energy efficiency of uh, our circuit, we would try to minimize the total energy con uh, consumed as well as to, to uh, have a larger portion of that energy consumed uh, be devoted only to the switching task. That is the task that is directly uh, related to the useful computational work. Now the final part of this our study in this video is to uh, analyze the power consumed by digital gates. Because as we have mentioned time and time and again, uh, power is the instantaneous demand of energy in a short duration of time and we can uh, compute power as a uh, we can compute the time varying uh, power consumption of a circuit to find out the uh, and integrate this over time to find out the total energy consumed the power consumed by digital gates uh, for useful work is given by the total energy divided by the duration of operation. T here refers to the total duration of operation under consideration and not the period of the uh, system clock. So the total energy consumed as we have seen is uh, half CVDD squared per useful transition that is per computational operation and this is given by and if uh, and if uh, and if there is a switching operation um, at every edge of the uh, clock cycle, uh, then we take into account the frequency here. Now you may ask. Why is there a switching frequency here when we have only so far considered combinational logic? The answer is simply is, is simple when you consider this. Almost all complex modern digital systems 
are finite state machines of one form or another, which means uh, circuits have the architecture of having a flip-flop or register file, feeding a cloud of uh, combinational logic, feeding flip-flops, register file, cloud of combinational logic. In this kind of finite state machine architecture, uh, gate, uh, uh, combinational logic operations are synchronized and we expect uh, one transition within a combinational group to occur within one period uh, within one period of a clock cycle. Therefore, we can uh, estimate that uh, logic transitions would occur once every uh, uh, clock cycle, that is, once every uh, up and down transition of the clock. So if a particular logic gate is transitioning, is transitioning uh, once every clock cycle, this is the maximum uh, number of transitions that can occur for that logic gate. Uh, and that can be expressed as alpha CVD squared F, where F is the clock rate of the uh, flip-flop. Okay. And alpha for logic must be less than or equals to half. Why? Because we have seen that each logic transition consumes half VDD squared of energy. Logic gates in a finite state machine uh, architecture uh, can only transition once every clock cycle so there are f number of transitions within a second and f number of transitions consume half cvdd squared energy of course not all uh, logic gate outputs will transition at every clock cycle uh, it doesn't make sense in fact they will transition at some rate that is slightly less at half and different logic gates will have different number of uh, transitions depending on the nature of the computation being performed. Therefore, we have this uh, parameter called alpha which is the uh, switching factor, okay, the tran probability transition, uh, the, the, which is the uh, transition probability that must be estimated uh, for each digital logic gate. There are two ways we can estimate this switching factor. Uh, one, which is a uh, general way when we do not have any information from simulations on or from uh, real uh, workload studies on the switching factor, we can therefore uh, assume uh, random probability transitions. That is, what is the probability of having a uh, uh, low to high and a high to low uh, transition uh, and that's given by an alpha is actually given uh, the uh, probability of a low to high and a high to low transition and for uh, basic logic gates okay, uh, the probability is expressed this way that is the probability of a transition at the input uh, the input uh, wire uh, multiply by the probability of transition at the output wire. This is for a two input AND gate. Um, and for an OR gate is this one. Okay. And the probability is simply, uh, and this probability P can simply be taken as the uh, uniform uh, uh, probability distribution for a binary switching variable 0 and 1. That is uh, P equals 0 0.5 for a transition. If we want to have a more uh, application uh, accurate uh, estimate of the power, we could also extract the activity factors uh, from uh, simulation studies uh, conducted with uh, digital simulators and that will give us a more accurate estimate of the uh, switching power.